Lord is the strength of his people and a stronghold of salvation to his anointed one. O Lord, save thy own people and give thy blessing of divine inheritance. O feed them also and set them up forever. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord. My God, be not silent unto me. Lest, if thou makest so thou hearest not, I become like them that go down into the pit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. The Lord is the strength of his people, and a strong hold of salvation to his anointed one. O Lord, save thine own people, and give thy blessing unto thine inheritance. O feed them also, and set them up forever. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, plant the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, 
Who liveth and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit ever? One God, world without end. Let us pray. Defend us, we beseech you, O Lord, from all perils of mind and body. And with the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mary, the ever virgin mother of God, a blessed Joseph, of our blessed apostles Peter and Paul, a blessed Aidan, and of all saints, graciously bestow upon us both peace and safety, that all adversity and error being done away, thy church may serve thee in untroubled freedom. Almighty God, who remember before thee this day, thy faithful servant Tom, we pray thee, having opened to him the gates of larger life, thou will receive him more and more into thy joyful service. And he may win with thee, my servants, everywhere the eternal victory. Through Jesus Christ, my Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Here begins the epistle in the third verse of sixth chapter of Blessed Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For, it, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we, we, we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath, hath no dominion over him. For, it, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Here ended the epistle. Thank you, God. Judge, deliver thee to the officer, 
and not be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost penny. The Gospel of the Lord. God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost and the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who stayed by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Bible study today, Hebrews 13, which is about which is the last chapter of Hebrews, so we're going to have to start thinking about what we want to do next. Uh, probably not Leviticus. So. Wednesday noon, Mass will be St. Vincent de Paul, and a sign up sheet for our August 6th potluck is downstairs. I know it's a week early, perhaps, but it's time to start thinking about it, because the bishop will be here three weeks from the day. Day of life, be God willing. As you can see, we have a guest preacher today, and well known to all of you and to me, Dr. Paul Knopf. start you out with a word today. Raka. Raka. You notice I'm not trying to get you to say it. There's a reason for that. If you heard our scripture this morning, you heard what Father Brad read, where Jesus said, whoever says Raka to their brother is liable to the judgment council. And whoever says you fool to your brother is on their way to hell. So that is not our goal here, as you know, is to expedite delivery to hell. We're doing just the opposite, expediting delivery to heaven. So I don't want to give you the key to going to hell in, in a verbal phrase. We'll stay away from that. But uh, I, had, I had, had twice dreamt about hell. Very interesting. It looked like, have you ever seen pictures of Germany after cities have been bombed? All the rubble and disaster and just like dust floating in the air. That was what hell looked like. Just like that. And, uh, but as I said, I'm not going to expedite your going there. I hope not. I want to expedite you're going the opposite way to heaven. And the Lord gives us the, the means to do that as well. It's to 
to show compassion. So we've had some incidences here at the church where people have been scandalized and I know of some of them. Uh, I think I have to say that we blame Father Brad too easily for things that go wrong. He's working really hard to make them go right. I can testify to that. So as he's working hard on those, we, we can mess it up on our own. There was a gentleman that used to uh, come here who heard some people at the door say during COVID season, oh, I wonder if some of these idiots will get vaccinated. And the other person said, no, I don't think they, some of them won't. And that offended him, and he left. And uh, I have his permission to tell this story. And uh, we're working on getting him back here, but we have to cover, in a sense, for um, bad behavior, or behavior that's not endorsed by the scripture. There was another guy last week, Father sent me this email, and maybe to you too. His name was Archbishop Colet. He was from York Parish in Great Britain. And his claim to fame was to say that the Lord's Prayer was a patriarchal prayer and relied too much on male interpretation and that we had to get rid of it. Well, that kind of surprised me for a couple of reasons. One, we were already discussing that in seminary in 1978. This is nothing new. Uh, and we had a good discussion led by the Women's Center on that issue. And I don't think any of us that participated will forget that. It was a power, very powerful raising of consciousness, I think. So, so that's, in one sense, where the Archbishop uh, Cola is Rears. He's way behind the times. That was discussed years, ago, 40 years ago. And we've been working since then on a translation of the Bible that changes the, the classical patriarchal language. That's been going on since 78 also. And uh, the Catholic version is coming out in 2025 where I might address some of these so in that sense, he's way behind the times, trying to get a headline for himself by saying, you know, let's get rid of the Lord's Prayer, or at least the, the structure of it. Um, but I don't think we should even say to him, Raka. I really don't. Raka comes from the Chaldean word ka, and, it, and the Hebrews picked it up in that form, it was ka. And the word meant empty-headed, beyond stupid, without a constructive thought in the mind. And that's why it's so powerful and it's so negative. And that kind of word, we have to be careful how we use with people, don't we? First of all, we probably shouldn't use it at all. We had a change in language, and you might have became aware of maybe not, in the, in the 2000s, it had to do with the language of disability. And a whole bunch of us that had kids that had disability were getting tired of the DSM, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, of referring to these kids as idiots. That was actually a technical term, idiot. A technical psychological term. And they were being diagnosed as idiots. If their IQ, IQ was below 70, they were an idiot. My, my son is below 70, so he was technically an idiot. But you can imagine, we as parents, we don't, we don't care for that nomenclature, so we leaned on a psychological society, said, you gotta change this. This is bad. You're, you're creating uh, prejudice against people you don't even know. 
just by how you're labeling that. And believe it or not, I never thought it would happen. The Psychological Society said, yes, you're right. We'll change it in the DSM-5, which came out in about, oh, 2015. And all that language was gone. They referred to people with intellectual disabilities as idiots. So we no longer call those people like my son idiots. We call them wonderful things. And I think it's worth noting at this point that when Hitler decided to, to go against people with disabilities, including Jews, that when he came out saying, we're going to do away with people with disabilities, the German people were not happy about that. And they let him know, we will not do this. We're not going to uh, isolate and kill those with intellectual disabilities. And so there was a big backlash before the Holocaust when Hitler wanted to institute this program to kill people with disabilities. So that shows you how powerful people can be when we get together and, and advocate for something. So we do the same thing for the DSM-5, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, Edition 5. And all that language was wiped out and no longer included in that volume. And we're all happier for it today. We don't even have to deal with it. Psychologists and psychiatrists don't even mention it just move right past it into something more positive. So I want to recommend to us that we do the same thing with other Christians. That is really the reason Jesus gives that we don't say these things to each other. Because if you say to your brother, he says, the Delphos, if you say to your brother that you are an idiot or a rock up, or a fool, you're going to pay for it because it's your brother. And we don't talk to our brothers like that, do we? I hope we don't. I love my brothers. We didn't always get along. But I would never say anything that nasty to either one of them. So it's how we want to treat one another. That goes back to the, uh, the adage of we do unto others as we want to be treated. So we don't want to be called an idiot. We don't want to be called an empty headed. So let's not do it to one another. Okay? And that'll be a good thing for all of us to emulate. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.